And welcome back, guys. We're going to be playing some more Starfield. Make sure to like button, make sure to subscribe button. Let's get back into it.
holding Nova. We double-checked the leakage concerns this morning before the launch. All signs green. Any changes to the calculation sequence from Voltaire? No changes since we uploaded the last figures yesterday. It's a clean shot from it's here to June. It's amazing to think that we're standing on the same planetary body where humankind first ventured One miracle space. of science at a time can have come a long way Five, since then. Four, three, two, one. Jupiter's orbit right now. Visual confirmation will be possible in <laughs> 32 minutes. Afraid the speed of light is on the slow side these days. <laughs> How does it feel to break the laws of physics, Canaveral? We're all pretty excited down here in NASA, I won't lie. Excited enough to tell me where you got the original data? Not in a million years.
Unless I'm mistaken, that's one of the launch towers used during the evacuation of the Earth. I can't even imagine the chaos. way into the NASA facility would be via an elevator shaft taking us straight down. Hopefully the system is still in operation. position. I wonder what prevented this particular colony ship from lifting off.
operation area. Probably the last step before boarding. Hmm, it's definitely seen better days. of microbial life. Instead, Dr. Victor Isa comes with two members of the military. Everything they've brought back is under wraps. What could a theoretical physicist need with a sample from Mars? Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. I'm trying to cozy up to Dr. Isaac, Victor, to see what is going on. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military hand refs, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little gray man who was doing an autopsy, and he grew very pale. Two days later, he sends me a request asking for more information on my background in material science, metallurgical engineering. Oh, we have a meeting tomorrow. I think I'm being invited into the lab. Station log. Dr. Judith Satin. I have never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half hour divergence into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was just to throw me off the trail of what we were actually talking about. Then I got to see the lab. I don't know how much I should say, but the periodic table just got thrown out the window.
have something I need to discuss with you. Can I help? relatives.
complete reversal of gravitational pull was observed on dozens of loose objects around the lab. I'm setting up a meeting with the directors to propose a larger test. The prototype proves we don't need the original anymore. But further work is going to have to take place in space. Somewhere with abundant helium-3 and with a civilian partner. Someone with access to large-scale manufacturing resources and computational equipment. Engineering gravitational folds pulling the far side of the solar system closer to us? It's all going to be possible. Project Lock, Dr. Judith Petian. I watched the Gravjet test from the moon today. It was the first time we were able to talk to the team at Nova Galactic directly. So many things were under wraps before, but now everyone wants all the publicity they can get. I'm already seeing proposals for manufacturing androids of drives, expeditions to Alpha Centauri and beyond. It's also overwhelming. Worrying. It could take years, decades, before we know what all these side effects of operating a grav drive can be. But no one wants to hear that right now. Like a bunch of pioneers racing towards the edges of the frontier without knowing about the grizzly bears in the mountains. to access the deeper sections of this storage area. I have something I need to discuss with you. Thank you. 
ancient history now. Only thing we're doing these days is launching weather satellites. Guess this is as good a retirement as any. Now project the meeting. I know what I'm seeing, Victor. My name is Dr. Victor Isa. And if you're listening to this, then you probably already know the truth. I was young when I first headed the retrieval team of an odd gravitational anomaly on Mars. But I kept what really happened that day hidden from everyone except one other person. Even she didn't believe me at first. But I have no reason to lie to anyone now, so I... I hope you'll accept this confession. Whoever you are. When I touched the anomaly, I experienced 12 days of lost time. I met myself. He told me everything that has since come true. The grav drive equations, the tests on the moon, Earth's atmosphere sputtering away because of what we had done. But he also told me about a city thriving on a planet orbiting a distant star. Human culture, art, music, lifestyles evolving and shining brightly across all of space. What price would I be willing to pay for that future? Believe me. Maybe Judith was right and I'm just a coward who wants to believe his mistakes were justified. But everyone has forgotten about the real origins of the grav drive. This artifact from Mars. I hope you make better use of it than I did.
understand now why I asked you to come here? The artifacts unlocked the secret of interstellar travel at the cost of Earth. An easy trade, honestly. Why have one world when you can have all the settled systems? Assuming we weren't going to lose it anyway. War, disease, famine, all the classics. Don't you see? The power of the artifact forced humanity to the stars. They didn't get to make a choice. How many would have chosen Earth? What gave Victor Isa the right to choose for them? You see the hypocrisy in what the Emissary is saying, right? They don't want to rob people of their free will, but then they steal the artifacts for themselves. In the wrong hands, the power of the artifacts can make anyone a tyrant. That's why we watch over them. The only thing you are watching out for is yourself. Join me, old friend. We can collect the final pieces together. Oh, no you don't. You're not her old friend, remember? You're from another universe. Don't try to manipulate her. Okay. I couldn't win you over on philosophy. How about pragmatism? I'm more powerful than the Emissary. Than any other Starborn. And you might not understand why, but I want you to succeed. You've never gotten this far before. I need to see what happens to you. Thank you. Well, can't say I didn't try. We'll settle this at the usual place. The Buried Temple will be there. You're lucky I'm a man of my word. I'll see you there. Stay for a moment. You must have questions about what happens next. We won't be able to go to the Buried Temple right away. There are still other artifacts out there in the settled systems that haven't been gathered. You'll need to work with your colleagues in Constellation to find them. There's always a final artifact in a specific temple. The Hunter and I agreed that whoever you sided with, the other would wait there. Expect anything and everything. Other Starborn, human mercenaries and defenses, alien creatures under mind control. It's all fair game. He and I have made a number of agreements over the years. If you can even call them years at this point. We let him go. In exchange, he will wait at the buried temple. You will be able to prepare any way you can before then. I will meet you in orbit above the buried temple. We will face what is there together. All the other artifacts need to be gathered before the final one. I'll be bringing one. Alrighty, that looks like a good place to stop. Make sure or you hit that like button, make sure to subscribe button.
I'll see you guys in the next video.